everyone, welcome back at Charlotte from Aunt Charlotte's house. And it has been a hot second. And I am starting with this powder room makeover. That's why I'm sitting on the toilet in a bathroom. I'm going to show you how I made over this whole space. But I also want to make sure that you give me a follow because I am days away from closing on my first flip house. It is a lot. Here we go. Here's a look at the powder room when I started. I had given it a mini makeover already and I had used adhesive tiles. Those are hand painted faces on the walls. It looks like wallpaper, but it was pretty easy and cost effective to do. I swapped out the doors on the builder grade vanity for that plywood, so it was fine, but I'm ready to redo everything. So I'm prepping the space for painting. Here I am disconnecting the water line so I can pull out the vanity. So I'm turning off the water, checking that there's nothing coming out of the faucet, all clear. That's the P-trap, so make sure you have a bowl. It all unscrewed pretty easily for me. Here's the water line coming away from the faucets themselves. So once everything is unhooked, the sink piece was able to lift up and out really easily. Yours may be different. Maybe it's attached with silicone somewhere. Mine was literally just sitting on top of the vanity base, so it was super easy to remove. And here's how it looked. Most vanities are going to attach to your wall studs in some place. So I unscrewed it and I dragged it out of the way. And here's what it looked like. I wanted to pull out the toilet, obviously, because I needed to get to the floor underneath it. Toilets are easier to remove than you might think. You pull off that little cap and then that nut will unscrew so you can lift it off from the floor. I made sure that it was obviously empty. There was no water in there. And then I just slid it out into the hallway outside the powder room. You always want to fill the sewage pipe. I went ahead and filled the pipe that was going into the sink drain as well. And now it's time to prep the space. These walls are super dark and I'm planning to wallpaper. So I primed them all first for two reasons. I didn't want the black paint to show through the wallpaper. I also didn't want the black paint to sneak out along the trim. So here you can see it's not perfect, but it's going to be a good clean slate. These are those adhesive floor tiles I told you about. I was really impressed with how well they stuck. I didn't notice any places where the corners had peeled up. So if you're looking for a quick little makeover, I definitely recommend these. I think mine were from Wall Pops. You can see I had to put some muscle in to get them up and they definitely left behind a little bit of a sticky residue. So that's something to consider when you're walking so you don't get sticky all over your shoes like I did. <laughs> Once I had pulled those up, it was time to go after the clay tiles that were underneath. This took a little bit more elbow grease. I'm really glad that the space wasn't super large. I'm using a crowbar here, but I ultimately went in with a chisel and that was a better solution. I needed ear protection because it was super loud and here we are. I noticed that there was a sheet of adhesive sheet vinyl flooring underneath and our house was built in the 80s so I didn't have to worry about asbestos but the good news about that vinyl flooring was that it meant I didn't have to go after all the thin set. I removed the baseboards and then I was able to slowly but surely remove the vinyl. It came off pretty easily. I had a wrench there so I could grab it a little bit easier and there were places that I had to cut or it tore but it didn't matter. And again, I didn't have to deal with any of the thin set residue, which was amazing. So now I'm down to the subfloor and to prep for the tile that I'm planning to put in, this is a concrete backer board. You always wanna use this because the subfloor has a little bit of flex to it and the tiles do not. So the tiles can easily crack if they're sitting just on top of the subfloor. So you wanna use concrete backer board. It's also water resistant and mold resistant. So it's just good practice to put this down first in a bathroom. So I'm putting down the mortar. I dry fit the concrete backer board first. I use just a jigsaw and my Dremel to cut out the hole for the sewer pipe and the vent over by the wall. And then I slid it in place on top of the mortar. The next step is to go in with special screws for concrete backer board. And the directions say, I think it's like every six or eight inches, the concrete backer board is marked where you should screw it in place. You don't wanna to get too close to the walls. It's really simple. Here I am filling in the seams. I'm using a little bit more mortar and that's just a tape, again, specifically for concrete backer board that you put in place and then you mortar on top of. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm sure I'm not doing it perfectly, but in general, I just wanted to smooth it out as much as possible. 
and make sure that there were no raised edges and it was all flat. Here we are, ready for tile. I'm using a two inch round tile that I found from Floor & Decor. I like that it's round like penny tiles, but it's bigger so it feels a little bit more modern and fun. Penny tile can be sort of tricky, so the only suggestion I have is you wanna stagger your sheets. So that was me dry fitting it. Here I am putting down the thin set and putting the tiles in place. I just used a wet saw out in my garage to cut the tiles that were gonna go along the edge. This is always fussier than I think it'll be, but it doesn't matter. I think I pulled it off. Before I added the grout, I went ahead and added wallpaper. This wallpaper is really fun. It's from Spoonflower. I'm crazy about it. I have it all linked in my blog post. The one thing that I want you to notice is I used my level to make sure my paper was vertical. This is a pre-pasted removable, so I'm spraying it with a water bottle to activate the paste, and then I just fold it over. This is called booking with wallpaper, and it just makes sure that the paste is fully distributed across the back of the paper. And then I'm putting it in place. I'm not an expert at wallpaper, but you can see me cutting those release cuts so I can get the paper around the window there. This has taken me the longest to figure out, but I think I have a pretty good system in place. You can see me checking for vertical again here. Now I have to confess that I was a little frustrated because I sort of got in a zone at this point and I forgot to check for level when I turned the corner. So the back wall is a tiny bit off of level, but thankfully I don't think you can notice once the toilet and the vanity is put back in place. This is me grouting and I need to point out because I mean you have eyes you can see it's blue grout and this was my favorite thing about this space. I was able to save money on a budget white floor tile but I wanted to bring in color and that's where the blue grout comes in. It's from a place called Grout360. Again I will link to everything in the video description. I made sure that my tiles would not stain with this grout. That's something they recommend and as I began to wipe the grout clear I could see that nothing was sticking behind, no residue, and it's beautiful. Okay, time for the vanity. This is a small little dresser that I got off Facebook Marketplace. I love the legs. There's a little brass detail there. It was the right size. It was a little bit smaller than the old vanity, but it's a powder room, so we don't need anything too large. So we're gonna turn this into a sink, obviously. So I am measuring for the faucet here. You wanna make sure that there's enough room for the sink. I was able to find a vessel sink that fits right on top of this surface. So I am drilling with the right size Forstner bit to accommodate the faucet, you can see it right under my arm there, and it'll tell you in the directions what size hole you need to drill. So here I am drilling through the top of the vanity, pipes for the faucet, they feed right in, and it fits perfectly. There's a nut that'll come up through the bottom to tighten that faucet in place. Here I am drilling a hole, and I had to make it a tiny bit bigger for the drain. I had to remove some of the pieces inside the dresser to fit the drain and accommodate the plumbing pipes coming out of the wall. But you can see the drain fits through perfectly. This will connect to the plumbing underneath and go into my wall. Here I am swapping out the hardware. Changing the hardware, you guys, is the easiest way to update any sort of thrifted piece. So I found some simple black knobs from Wayfair, I believe. These were, I think, a three inch span, which wasn't as common. So I was unfortunately limited by my choices, but I found something that felt fresh and new and I like the way that semicircle ties into the penny tiles. So I'm pleased with this. And again, it just updates the piece and makes it fit in with the rest of the space better than the existing knobs, in my opinion. I wanna be able to use my drawers as much as possible. So I am gonna retrofit them so that they can go into the vanity, but work around the plumbing. So here I am taking apart the top drawer. I'm not gonna bother retrofitting this because it's such a small drawer. I'm literally removing the front face of this drawer and I will screw it in place onto the vanity so that will not move. Here I am cutting out essentially the middle of the other two drawers. So I'm using my four inch circular saw and I am cutting along the back of the drawer. That's what you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna turn the drawer over and I'm using a combination of my jigsaw and my Dremel Multimax to remove the middle of the drawer along the bottom. So to rebuild the drawer, I cut a three quarter inch piece of plywood to size and I'm just using wood glue and 
a stapler and an L bracket. It does not look pretty. It does not need to function perfectly. Again, it's a powder room, so people are not gonna be opening these drawers all that often. I didn't even replace the drawer slides inside the vanity. So when you open the drawer, it's a little wobbly, but again, it's literally holding hand towels and toilet paper and that's it. So it's totally sturdy and it works for what we need. Here I am putting the baseboards back in place. I went ahead and bought some new primed baseboards. So I cut them to size, I mitered the corners and I'm using a brad nailer to tack those in place. I will go back with nail fill and caulk to clean it up. To figure out where the plumbing is, I put the vanity into the space and I just marked with the pencil how much I needed to remove from the back of the vanity. And then I took it out onto the front porch. It does not have to be cute. I went ahead and just used a straight edge, but truly no one is going to see it. So all you need to do is make sure the plumbing can fit. So I drilled a starter hole enough to fit my jigsaw through. And then I used my jigsaw to cut out the back I had to go in and remove, you can see it hits right where the drawer is. So I used my Dremel to remove there and that's plenty of room for those pipes to fit in place so that I can have the vanity flush against the wall. There, perfect, fits like a glove. Before I screwed it in place and finished connecting the plumbing, I taped and caulked around the baseboards and the tile just because I knew I couldn't reach back here. Otherwise, this really finishes the space off. I used a special caulk that is meant for tile. I got that at the tile store. And now it's time to put the sink together. I'm using some silicone to attach it to the top of the vanity. You can see I taped off where I needed to place it so it was all measured and centered. And then I put it in place. Once it's secure, you put the drain down. And again, there's a nut that comes up through the bottom of the vanity and tightens around the drain. And then I connected all the plumbing inside. I added some backer blocks for the top drawer so I could tape it in place and then go in from the inside. And just with a single screw, I screwed it in place. This is not going to move. It's just gonna be a fixed drawer front. And then the middle drawer and the bottom drawer are functional. And here's how she looks, all put back together. I am crazy about the blue grout. I love the way the wallpaper works in here. It's fun and colorful and whimsical. It fits the vibe of our home. I love the way it matches the blue grout. I think the vanity adds a little bit of class and a little bit of warmth to the space. I went ahead and replaced the mirror. I added some artwork. I will link to everything, but I just, I am so happy with how it turned out. I'm happy that I finally was able to address everything in this space. This room is downstairs. It gets used all the time and I just couldn't be happier with it.